in times when the stakes and emotions are running high, it's often not those with the best policy or the best idea, but actually those who can regulate their state, regulate their physiological response to stress and anxiety and fear and regulate the amount of non-verbal leakage they send out who actually have the upper hand. Now, I've received quite a few questions about Trump's exaggerated, clown-like smile. And while his facial expression might appear a little bizarre, it actually serves a purpose. Used to deflect and also mask emotion, Trump's trademark clown-like grimace is a behavioral countermeasure that enables him to not only control his facial expressions, deflect attention away from himself when he doesn't want it, but also mask what it is that he's really feeling and control the emotional leakage, that nonverbal leakage and signs of discomfort that he's sending out, whilst dampening his physiological stress response and helping him to feel more calm. Now, people tend to either simulate, neutralize, or mask when they're falsifying facial expressions. We saw during the presidential debate, Biden often maintained, albeit pretty ineffectively, and a pretty inexpressive poker face. Whereas Trump, in moments of high emotional discomfort, arousal, often reverted to using that mask and that clown-like grin. And unlike a genuine Duchenne smile, which activates the psychomatic major and the orbicularis oculus, it gives you that beautiful crinkling of the eyes as well as the lifted corners. In Trump's forced grimace, his lips are tightly compressed. The corners of his mouth are angled upwards and outwards, but not in a natural way and not with a natural onset and offset, but a very fixed duration which again indicates a fake rather than genuine smile. Now on the downside, this fixed exaggerated grin can actually denote an air of smugness that may not resonate or probably won't resonate with a lot of voters. But it's a non-verbal protection mechanism that non-verbally is designed to ward off an attack and also give the impression that he's completely, he's not phased by what's being said. It's water off a duck's back when in actual fact, he is, he is phased. And I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of examples. So in response to Biden's comment, I don't know what the juries will do, we see Trump's lips compress into and then elongate into that clown-like smirk and his eyes simultaneously closed for 24 frames for almost one second. So while his forced grin says, I don't care, the prolonged eye contact, the furrowed brow, the lip press and also the ventral retreat, so his chin lowering defensively in a subconscious attempt to protect these vulnerable areas such as the neck and throat actually indicate vulnerability, intimidation and defensiveness. And an eye closure for more than half a second, as we see here, also suggests an attempt to distance himself from what's being said. Or if you're speaking, to distance yourself from what you're saying. And in another example, when speaking about his time as a president, Biden states that they said that it was the worst in all of American history. And we see Trump nodding in agreement. His grin again fixed in place. However, on that's a fact. Trump's forced grin dropped temporarily, a sudden offset. We saw a lick of the lips, pursing of the lips before this very quick onset that um, that grimace again fixed into place, but this time with the pursed lips. Now, in contrast to that forced grin, which says, I don't have a care in the world, pursed lips actually indicate disapproval, suppressed agitation. It's our body's subconscious way of holding back and saying no, and can also be a sign that someone is evaluating their options or weighing up what to say or do next. And so there's this lack of congruence there. Trump also uses a mask, sometimes with that clown-like grin and sometimes with a more neutral smile as a deflective strategy to undermine and mock his opposition. So we'll see him looking at the candidate, in this case, Biden. His head 
tilted and cocked to the side, eyes narrowed, smile either neutral or in a fixed grin, eyebrows raised. And when we raise our eyebrows, it's often in acknowledgement. But in this case, it's seeking confirmation and acknowledgement from the audience. And this cluster indicates suspicion, but it feels theatrical as if Trump is playing up to the viewers at home, playing up to the audience. It's his body's way of saying, can you believe this guy? And casting doubt and suspicion on Biden. Now, the face is directly directly connected to our limbic or emotional brain. And that means that our face can in, inadvertently leak out information when our emotions are heightened or our cognitive load is high, like when we're in a presidential debate. And that provides a window into what it is that we're really feeling, a window into our inner state. However, our face is actually a dual system. And that means that it can produce uh, voluntary and involuntary expressions at the same time. And so while emotional arousal causes our facial muscles to fire, resulting in these fleeting micro expressions that reveal what it is we're truly feeling that last a fraction of a second, these signals are often covered up by a smile, one of the easiest facial expressions to make. And people often ask me, why do we cover them up with a, with a smile? And one of the reasons for that is that the lower portion of our face is easier to control and therefore less subject to nonverbal leakage than this upper portion of our face, which tends to be more reliable for emotion. And so I'll give you an example. Despite the magnitude of Trump's exaggerated smile, his emotions, emotional arousal, discomfort and heightened cognitive load are often evident in his furrowed brow. A smile also acts as a countermeasure and countermeasures are physical or mental techniques that change our physiological response to a stimuli, in an internal stimuli, an external stimuli, a, a situation, or in this case, a question. Often we'll use breathing or respiration, our respiration rate to alter our state, to change our physiological response, to bring a sense of calm. But a smile, even a fake smile, has been shown to dampen the stress response and trick our brain <laughs> into believing that we're happy. So a University of Canvas study published in a physiological, psychological science found that holding a chopstick in your mouth, so participants held a chopstick in their mouth to force the muscular contractions associated with a smile. And what they found was a decreased stress response and lowered heart rate in the participants who'd held that position. So when the zygomatic major muscle contracts, it lifts the uh, corners up and outwards towards the cheekbone, so it creates this smile, the social smile. And this muscular movement is actually tied to our facial nerve, and it activates our brain's reward center and releases a dose of neuropeptides, your good endorphins, dopamine, and serotonin. And, Oh, that delivers this feel-good boost that reduces anxiety. It's been shown to increase likability, increase perceived sociability, confidence, trustworthiness, and even, even our competence. So a smile doesn't just feel good. It's directly connected to our emotional brain. And a smile and its happiness boost has actually been shown to be contagious, spreading a feel-good ripple effect to all those around us in a process known as emotional contagion. And I love this. There was this Swedish study and it found that smiling is so contagious that people automatically smile when shown an image of a smiling face, even, even if they've been told to frown. So when someone smiles, it actually activates the orbitofrontal cortex of the, the brain. So the brain area responsible for the processing of sensory rewards. And we cannot help but smile too. So even if we don't want to smile, even if we don't like the candidate, <laughs> so Trump's clown-like humor might seem like a very bizarre, out-of-the-box strategy, but he's a performer. He has a team around him who are advising him on what to, on what action to take, what strategies to take, and I can guarantee 
that this is one strategy that he and his advisors have thoroughly thought through.